I want to start by giving a shout out to one of my fans. Cole, if you're watching, I got some Star Wars games coming soon. So stay tuned! A while back I did a review on a game called Felony 1179. It was part of a Japanese series of games called Runabout. By the time the sequel hit stores here in the US, they had dropped the whole Felony 1179 thing and uh, just called it Runabout 2. In late 2000, the third game in the series, Super Runabout San Francisco Edition hit the Dreamcast. Now I've always been a real big fan of these mission-oriented driving games, so when I heard about this game, naturally, I was pretty pumped up about it. Some of these Dreamcast games haven't really held up that well over time. So let's dive right into this one and see how it stacks up nearly 15 years after its release. Super Runabout San Francisco Edition. Now, first and foremost, I want to state that the city of San Francisco is the perfect setting for a game like this. We saw the city used many times in previous racing titles such as Cruising USA, the original Driver, and the Rush series, not to mention newer titles like Driver San Francisco. Now, as soon as the game starts up, you're prompted to choose one of two scenarios to play. The first scenario puts you into the life of an old mechanic named Pops, who owes money to the wrong people. Along with Pops, his family tags along in an attempt to pay off his debts by running around the city completing tasks given to him by the city's biggest crime boss. Or something like that. That's what I got out of all of this. Scenario B places you in the shoes of two not-so-top cops that are trying to move their way up to the crime scene unit. As the good guys, you'll hit the city looking to serve justice in some pretty bizarre missions. We'll get into some of those in a bit. There are a lot of vehicles in the game. Now, most of them are locked from the start, but you'll gain access to them over time after completing tasks. Each scenario has their own unique selection. As the police, you'll have access to a cop car, motorcycle, ambulance, and a few nice undercover vehicles. As the couriers, you'll see some pretty standard vehicles mixed in with some stuff like quads and even a moped. You can even use the yellow truck from the original runabout, aka Felony 1179, here in the States. The driving element is both simple and complicated at the same time. It's kind of a slower paced game as far as speed goes, which makes it easier to handle, but Somehow at the same time, the floaty cars can often send you slamming into oncoming traffic, and some of these vehicles are just harder to keep straight. Now, most of us will get used to this, but I know some people that really don't like the handling here. The graphics are a bit dated, but for the time they look good. I'd still say other titles like Crazy Taxi looked a bit better. The main problem I come across here is really bad draw distance. Now the Runabout series has always been notorious for this, but Come on, this is the Dreamcast now, and I know it's more capable than this. They did a pretty good job of recreating the entire city. It's about 50% recreation and 50% original stuff. The musical score is done by the same Japanese surf band that did the music for the first two Runabout games. And I like this style of music for this kind of game. It just fits well. The sound effects could be a bit better, but again, this has been an ongoing battle in the Runabout series. Just watch my Felony 1179 review. I mean, why is my motorcycle making this noise? It sounds like it's gonna blow up at any minute. Oh, and this isn't annoying at all. I actually ended up stuck like that and couldn't get the bike off. Now the missions are a bit on the strange side no matter what scenario you're playing. 
One of them actually requires you to collect all the parts that make up a hot dog. I'm not kidding. You have to run around the city looking for buns, the hot dogs themselves, and lettuce. Yes, lettuce for a hot dog. Now that's proof enough that this game was not made in America. Another mission has you ramming illegally parked limousines into the back of tow trucks, which seems way more illegal than the actual parking itself. One of my favorite missions in the game is where you're given a bus and you have to race around the city picking up members of the San Francisco Giants, I mean baseball team, and deliver them to Candlestick Park, I mean baseball stadium. There's just something really entertaining about this mission, and I can seriously play it over and over again without getting bored. Plus, there's nothing like racing across the Bay Bridge and barging into the middle of a baseball field in a Greyhound bus. Certain missions require certain vehicles to succeed. For example, in this mission, I have to destroy a cable car, and the motorcycle isn't really the best vehicle to get the job done. I failed. The limo, on the other hand, works great. And for the record, the moped is horrible for any mission. It maxes out at 58 miles per hour. The final mission of the game has you taking part in a jail bust on Alcatraz while missiles are being launched at you. It's actually a bit challenging between the missiles and the time limit. It might take you a few attempts. In fact, the time limit is kind of your biggest enemy here in this game. There's been many times where I just couldn't complete a mission strictly because I ran out of time. So you pretty much have to have a pretty good game plan and not crash much to win. You can also tune vehicles to your liking, which is pretty cool, and there's also a free run mode, but don't let the name fool you. These are just time trial races on barricaded courses with no traffic vehicles. I was hoping to actually go wherever I wanted around the city with no time limit. I was always surprised how unknown this series of games was. I always gravitated towards these types of games when I was younger, and I had a lot of fun with this one. The Dreamcast was just a cool console to own until the PS2 came out and everybody sold theirs to hop back on the Sony bandwagon. But nevertheless, if you have a Dreamcast and like games with cars in them, this is a must own. It was a great title then, and it's still fun now, so go check it out.